Recent Trends in Power Electronics Applications and I am UC Patnaik, Managing Director, Project and Simple Examples. Latest versus Oldest Triple five based PWM using VZT transistor by bipolar transistor. Triple five based PWM using MOSFET. Inverter with full transistors. Inverter with digital ICN transistors. Inverter with digital ICN MOSFETs. Inverter with H bridge and MOSFETs. Inverter with IGBTs. And inverter with SCRs. Why I wanted to cover this because I just wanted to cover as an example of the old technology versus the new technology. This is what is important for somebody to know as to finally how the product has evolved in power electronics, a particular product say for an inverter in a process from 1970s to 2014 and you can see the difference of technology being followed. Now let's see a triple five based PWM using VJT transistor. First of all, I must tell you that the number of circuits which are available in the internet, but then there are quite a large number of circuits which has got a lot of mistakes also. This is the circuit which I picked up from the net and you can find there's a gross mistake here where this is a triple five timer. This is a triple five timer used in the stable mode where the capacitor is here, the resistance is here and there is only charging path and there is no discharging path to the uh, pin number 7. In the process this circuit is completely defective and it will never work. So this is what is the problem that we find first of all in the internet circuits. Number 2, this particular circuit we are using a BJT transistor here, it is a uh, Darlington transistor BD679 uh, in uh, series with a motor. But uh, the, even if it is a Darlington transistor, we know the transistors operate only based on the current flowing in the base emitter circuit so that the collector uh, happens to draw the current and then the motor runs. This is a PWM, simple PWM circuit while we move this wiper to this side and that side should happen but with a mistake we will see the make correction of the mistake in the next slide. And when you come to the next part of it that is a triple five best PWM using MOSFET it is better. The, because the advantage of the MOSFET is, is that it uses the voltage which is available from the triple five and not the current in the process. The heating or the power uh, loss in the active area here is much less as compared to the transistor. But here we have corrected the circuit. Now you can find the charging takes place by this route and discharging takes place by this route. That is how the duty cycle of the pulse width modulation can be easily managed maintaining the frequency same. So that is how the speed of the motor can change depending on the movement of this wiper. To understand that let us try to analyze this particular circuit where we have a battery and a transistor and a load of 24 ohms and uh, we have a switch for the base circuit and we have a switch for the main circuit. Anyway that circuit operation we can uh, keep it at the moment the off condition and uh, we keep it at the off here and keep it at the off here. And then when we switch on the power what we notice is uh, that once we switch on the base current we find the base current is flowing, base current the very very uh, oh, sorry the base current will flow only when the main current is uh, switched on. Once you switch on the main current you find the base current is 10.5 milliamperes and the collector current is 314 milliamperes. But if you look at the power loss across this transistor because the transistor is having a huge uh, voltage drop across this 4.43 volts. So that means 0.314 is the ampere instead of in, in, in terms of ampere and 4.43 is the voltage across the transistor we find that there is a 1.38 watts drop across this that means it will be developing a heat component of 1.38 watts and unless you have an adequate heat sink on this is going to fail. So this is what is the problem 
with the transistors that we use. Compared to that, when we look at the MOSFET in the same circuit, we have same 24 ohms load here and then we have the same arrangement and when we switched on here, what we notice that the power loss is 0.49 amperes here as far as the current is concerned and the voltage is 0.21 in the process the power loss is 0.1029 as compared to what we found one point something and it is about 10 times less as compared to the transistor. That is how with the MOSFET is a voltage driven device it doesn't uh, draw much of current as far as the basis as far as the gate circuit is concerned and uh, there is a RDS at the particular uh, MOSFET which has got a drain to source resistance so low that the power loss across this or the voltage drop across this is too low in the process the power loss is very very low. So it is an active uh, switch which is very efficient in terms of using in using them as far as the switching operation is concerned. Let us see why. This is a transistor whereas this is a MOSFET. We have the indication given here as far the flow of electron is concerned because the electron flows in the other direction so don't get confused over this the current actually flows in this direction and uh, the LED glows this way and here the motor operates when the voltage is applied here. This is what is how it works in transistor versus inverter with full transistors a very old technology. The upper one is a saturable core type inverter with self oscillating features while the bottom one with a driven oscillator. We have an oscillator which is a driven oscillator. These are two primitive circuits. We are trying to get some examples of the older technology versus the new technology and this is this is what I would call a primitive technology. Here it was not having any much of electronics excepting some power uh, transistors and a transistor with a saturable core transformer and in the process this was giving some AC output. This has been very obsolete and now it is not being used now. This also is quite uh, old and this also has found its way out from the market. Inverter with digital IC and transistors still a older technology, still an older technology. Little better but again with age old BJT which results in huge power loss. These are the age old uh, 3055, a lot of power loss because we have to use some series resistors here as far as the balancing of the current is concerned as compared to MOSFET which can be connected directly parallel but whereas these transistors cannot be connected directly in parallel that's always the huge power loss apart from the transistor also in the series resistor. Inverter with digital IC MOSFETs and MOSFETs which is a better technology. It is much better by using MOSFETs as power switches. We have the MOSFETs here as power switches being driven from a digital IC and in the process this circuit is still being followed at some places but this also is not very very much in use at the moment. And finally the microcontroller best is the best. Here we use a PIC microcontroller because the crystal is not shown here and then the driven elements are here. The oscillation takes place as per the program here which is being driven uh, to these uh, given to these MOSFETs and in the process in the process we, what we notice the AC is available here and uh, this is the best part of the inverter that it uses unlike the digital device and all what we had seen the digital device where the frequency is determined by the R and C, R and C of this and uh, since R and C are subjected to variation as per the temperature the frequency can also change. As compared to this we have the crystal operated frequency being divided to a very low value from a very high value, we'll say 20 megahertz 
then from 20 megahertz we come down to about 50 hertz in the process the chances of frequency variation is almost ruled out because it's, it's time controlled as compared to R and C based. That's the biggest advantage and this is the final type which is presently in use as this is of course a square wave and uh, it can also be available in sine wave based on what kind of program that one writes. Inverter with H bridge P and N MOSFETs which is commercially a bad technology. What is commercially bad technology? Because one has to use one N type MOSFET and another P type MOSFET in which in each limb, this is one limb, this is the next other limb. They are required to be with matching parameters besides P type or a rare availability and thus higher is the cost. Inverter with H bridge, all N type MOSFETs, much better technology. A much better H bridge type power switch using all N type MOSFET. As we can see here, this is an N type, this is an N type, this is an N type, and this is an N type. All four are N type. Inverter with IGBTs is the best. Here we have a three phase circuit where we have six IGBTs and these are the much better type as compared to the MOSFET because it can handle higher voltage and higher current too. Inverter with silicon control rectifier SCRs are primitive. They, are, they were used perhaps in 1970s and 80s or in those areas or maybe prior to 70s in 60s. These are uh, the serious drawback where the commutation care has to be taken care of because once we know the SCR conducts as far as the DC is concerned, it continues to conduct and then the commutation has to take place by this capacitor and careful choosing of this capacitor is very important for using them for inverter applications. Look at this, the discrete component versus modules most preferred. This is a discrete component as we know. This is an IGBT. It's a sim singular IGBT. We can use number of IGBTs and uh, we can make any kind of inverter. Uh, we can also use uh, modules where six IGBTs, one, two, three, four, five, six are used in one module so that it becomes much easier to change the devices as compared to individual MOSFETs and wiring them also will be difficult in the process the heat sink the bottom one also is the it operates as the heat sink and look at this this is a modular concept is a technology of the west as the labor cost is too high in india we prefer the discrete since in case of repair need the expenses are far less but the labor cost is high that is what the modular concept is followed as compared to a modular concept with the control circuit built in. Here we have the entire control circuit which is built in. So all that one has to do is to feed the oscillation and the whole thing works as far as the inverter is concerned. And that entire circuit comprises of all this. We have the opto isolations, we have the bridge drivers, then we have the bridge six uh, uh, IGBTs and all associated circuits everything is included in this so that one would only use the oscillation that is required for the inverter purposes. So this is the latest concept being followed as far as the inverter application is concerned with of course certain control parameter observation by certain connectors to the PCs or maybe to the network.